What's up everyone, it's Sinistry, and today we are going to talk about why casual games are such a flash in the pan kind of fun. If you haven't checked out my channel before, then you may not know, but casual games are one of the most fun kinds of games to me, but they are not necessarily my favorite kind of game. However, I still love them a lot, but I need to be completely honest, I've been getting a little bit burned out by them. So I was really thinking, you know, why are casual games so fun for such a short period of time? I mean, I'm pretty sure it's not just me. I think a lot of casual game fans find that the games are super fun for a few weeks or a few months, but then over time they just get a little bit stale. So I sat down and I thought about it and I came up with a couple of different reasons why these games might kind of feel like flash in the pan fun. So we're going to talk about those reasons today and then at the end of this video I have a very small update for this channel, so if you're interested in that make sure to stick around until the end. But with that being said, let's jump right in. So the the first reason why I think casual games are so flash in the pan is because they really appeal to a broad audience. In fact, that's where casual games get their name from. It's from casual gamers, people who don't play a lot of games, they maybe don't play games all the time, they have other hobbies that are their primary interests, things like that. Since casual games are really meant to appeal to a wide variety of people, you kind of find that they don't really push the boundaries a whole lot. They don't really have any elements that go above and beyond a just normal standard good enough game. They might have basic controls, they have a kind of minimal story, and they may have limited number of quests or goals, or they just might not even really have any for you to achieve. Because of that, if you're a gamer, you might realize that these games are really not made for you. They are made for just a general audience of people who aren't really that invested in games, and thus a more subpar kind of game kind of still gets their attention. And not only that, but these games tend to be a lot more approachable for the average person, whereas a standard game that's really meant for gamers might be a little too complex and a little intimidating. However, regardless of whether you're a gamer or more of a casual game, Gamer, you may come to realize that these games get a little bit stale over time because you don't really have any complexity within any of the aforementioned areas. Gamers might just find these games to be a little bit surface level and look for more options that have more complexity and are more well developed, whereas casual gamers might just find other hobbies that keep their interest for longer. Now the second reason why I think these games are so flash in the pan actually kind of goes along the same lines, and it's because they tend to have very self-driven gameplay. This isn't the case for every game, but you do tend to see a lot of casual games with kind of freeform gameplay where maybe you can do farming, you can do mining, you can go talk to people, you can build or decorate. Think about games like The Sims. Also think about games like Stardew Valley, where yes, there are a lot of goals for you to do, but you don't have to achieve them. There's literally no downside, and you can just kind of play however you want. Now while this choose your own adventure kind of style of gameplay can be really appealing at first, I think over time you may realize that these games become a bit of a chore to have to develop for yourself. I mean, really, there's only so much your imagination can take you through these games before you get kind of tired of having to develop plots just to keep the game interesting for yourself. If you're tired after a long day of work or school, then you might not really have the energy to put into, you know, making the game fun for yourself, so you might just kind of put it aside for a different kind of game. And if you choose not to put it aside and you decide, well, I'm just going to, you know, work on the progress of things I've already built up and I'll just figure out a plot later later, then what you might find is these games become basically the equivalent of a mobile game. What I mean by that is they can become very grindy and have little substance over a period of time, and you might just feel like you're not really progressing or doing anything meaningful. So I think this is maybe a reason why people just tend to forget about these games over time, or maybe just don't feel like playing them all the time because you really have to work hard to make them interesting for yourself. And one issue that's kind of similar, but along a different line is the content pacing issues that I think you see in a lot of these games as well. 
A great example of this is Animal Crossing New Horizons. This game was so primed for the, you know, lockdown, the shutdown of the whole world, and people were really obsessed with it for a while. It did provide some nice escapism, but really after a few months, people just slowly started to log off and never log back on. I think one of the issues is casual games tend to update their content over a longer period of time. They might not give a substantial, you know, story up update or give you new things to do for months or sometimes even years at a time. Depending on the game, this can be very detrimental to its player base. Something like Animal Crossing that is so self-driven and doesn't really have a whole lot of plot is really bare bones when you don't have new content updates. On the other hand, other games tend to not have this issue as much. I'll kind of explain why in a little bit, but I definitely think that when you run out of content and you're just waiting and waiting, it's so easy to just go, this game is dead, I'm just gonna go pick up a different game. Or if you're into other hobbies, then you might think it's a good time to kind of switch over and do those instead of playing games. And honestly, it can be really hard to get people back even when there is new content. Also along with this, something I've noticed a lot of casual game developers do is they'll give like aesthetic updates a lot sooner and a lot more frequently thinking this is going to tide people over and it almost never does, at least I think on a broad level or at least with the, you know, loudest minority or whatever that's online. Like it's cool to get a couple new outfits or furniture pieces or hairstyles, but that's not really going to keep me playing a game if I feel like I have no goals within the game itself. So yeah, I definitely think that not having enough new gameplay, enough gameplay that kind of shakes things up is really a reason why these games tend to die out very quickly. And I think that developers really need to keep that in mind when releasing a casual game. People aren't just gonna be interested in, you know, spamming the same button 500 times to farm or doing things like that. It's just quite boring. And sometimes these tasks take a long time. So the grinding is very real. I mean, you can spend hours hours just doing the same task and not making a lot of progress and also not having a reason to do this task in the first place. But the gameplay is not the final reason I have for you. That is actually that we are so spoiled for choice with entertainment. Just take a second and think, how many video games come out in a year? You might be thinking a couple dozen, you know, you might be looking at the AAA titles, things like that. But honestly, I would venture to guess it's hundreds if not thousands every year because there are so many indie titles that aren't released on major platforms. They might only be on like Steam or things like that. And even as far as AAAs go, it's probably close to 100 a year. I mean, it might be more or less. I don't know. I don't keep up with the news as much, but I do think that there are so many games that come out every year that are huge releases. And then so many more that come out that kind of fly under the radar, but that people can definitely pick up at any point in time. And that's just for video games. You also have to consider that for entertainment options, we also have streaming services. We have YouTube or Twitch, other forms of social media that keep us engaged, things like TikTok, TikTok or Instagram. You can actually go outside nowadays, so you can go like work out, you can go to the movies, you can go do in-person kind of experiences. I mean, you can even crack open a book. So with so much content out there, why would we really spend hours of our lives just grinding through the same task over and over again, especially when it's not progressing anything? But now kind of thinking about everything, if there are so many things going against casual games, then why are they still very successful? I'm sure there are tons of reasons, but I'm just gonna point out a few of what I think are the biggest contributors to the success of these games. The first is that people are very familiar with the setup of a casual game, especially games like Farming Sims, things like that, where you've seen, you know, dozens of these kinds of games, so you go into it knowing kind of what to expect. And in addition, these games do sometimes get really good DLC updates, so it's not like they're constantly barren, but you know, people are just kind of waiting for the new content to come out and they figure might as well get the game now and then new content will be out in a few months, I'm sure. And I mean, think about games like Sims. So much content comes out and like half of it is complete garbage and people still buy it all, myself included. So really like we're kind of feeding into this problem. But the third reason is that there are some really, really good casual games. I mean, I have mentioned Stardew already in this video, but Stardew Valley literally is peak casual game. I think it's the number one best casual game of all time. I'm going to say that, and if you disagree, 
I'm sorry, but I think it's pretty much truth at this point. So since some of these games are just incredible and give you so much to work with, I feel like a lot of people are willing to try other games that seem kind of similar with the hope that they will get a very similar experience out of that game. Unfortunately, just like a lot of really incredible games, most games don't really hit that kind of peak and Stardew is really like just in a league of its own. It's barely able to be called a casual game at this point because of how much is in it. And then aside from the base game, the fourth reason is that you actually have modders for some of these games that add, again, so much to these games that kind of make it worthwhile for you to pick them up. The Stardew modding community is so vast. It's incredible. There are people who are literally making new characters, new plots, new locations, all kinds of things. And Sims is another great game for modding. There are tons of mods, tons of custom some content for this game. So if you get bored of the base game, you can just go find mods and it's great. But unfortunately, not every game has a very strong modding community. So the ones that don't tend to be a little more forgettable. But nevertheless, I do think that modders do kind of help contribute to the longevity of certain games, but unfortunately they can't always make up for the gameplay issues that are apparent within every one of these games. So kind of wrapping things up, you know, I don't think that casual games are actually going anywhere. I do think that they will continue to be successful, and I think that people will continue to play them much in the same way they always have. Unfortunately, I think that companies actually could do a lot with the casual game genre to kind of shake things up and make it more unique, but they just haven't really put in the effort to try. I don't think that they would have to overly complicate it and potentially scare off the more casual gamers. I think that they could just add more kinds of content to make it interesting. But it really goes to show that games that do put in that effort like Stardew Valley just have so much longevity. I mean, this game has been out for what, like six years or something at this point? It's still going super strong. There's new content released for it every like year or two, and it just has such a vast community. Now, as far as I'm concerned, I don't think I'll ever stop loving casual games. I do really enjoy them when I just feel so tired and I don't want to have to think about, you know, a puzzle game or an RPG or anything like that. But as far as this channel goes, my update is that I don't think I'm going to be able to just cover casual games moving forward. I really prefer making videos like this one, ones where I analyze topics that are interesting to me and I share those findings or those thoughts with you and then like to hear from you about your own opinion. Now this doesn't mean I'm never going to talk about casual games, it just means that I'm only going to talk about casual games when I have something to say and not just making like a guide on how to do something that 10 other people have already done. And instead I'm going to cover a wide range of games because I have a wide range of interests and if you are a gamer who likes a lot of different games as well then definitely make sure to stay tuned because you will find lots of different kinds of content on this channel. I'm genuinely just really excited to cover all of the different games that I have been pushing aside for the past few weeks or months and I really hope that you're excited to hear about them too. But for now I think that that's everything I had about my channel and about casual games and I would really love to hear from you. Do you think that casual games are very flash in the pan? Do you tend to play casual games for like a week or two and then you set them aside and you don't pick them up for six months? Let me know if you are that kind of person down in the comments below. Don't worry, I'm that way, so I won't judge you. But with all that being said, make sure to like and again, subscribe if you like this kind of content. And thank you so much for watching. I will see you next time.